Hey Josh, thanks for coming in, taking this time. Sorry we're running so late, but tell us a little about how you're going to take Alan Edmonds sales team to the next level. All right, thank you very much for having me. I'm really excited to be speaking with you uh, today. Um, just want to go over the agenda really quick. Um, just, a, just a short agenda, I have a small presentation for you. I do want to uh, go over our mission statement again, some of our current challenges, uh, the culture of our sales team, which I believe at this point needs major restructuring. Uh, I want to go over a little bit about our, our recruiting process and our strategy for that. So our sales strategies and finally implementation. And so what's our mission statement? Uh, well, as many of you know, we, uh, we, we are an American original. We handcraft uh, high-end, high-nose footwear. Uh, we've been doing it since 1922. And a couple interesting facts, 98.5% of footwear sold in the U.S. is produced overseas. I'm sure many of us you know, can, can believe that with the amount of footwear that we purchase and clothing in general that's just produced overseas. And so it's really nice to find a company that's you know, still doing something the old, traditional, timeless American way. Um, you know, in the past, looking back, you know, we, we produced shoes for the U.S. Army, the U.S. Navy during World War II. And now going forward, I believe we're one of the most socially responsible uh, companies in our industry. Right? We pay our employees well, our benefit packages are phenomenal, and we're environmentally conscious. So that's just a little recap of who we are. And now here are some of our uh, external challenges. Okay, domestic reduction, I mean, that's expensive, right? There's a reason why companies are not producing in the U.S. It's so much cheaper to do so elsewhere. And so, like I said, the cost of fair wages, the emission permits, and materials in general, because we've used very high quality materials, uh, these costs do add up. So that's some of our external challenges. Um, we serve a small niche market, right? I mean, not every gentleman wants to drop $300 on a pair of shoes. Uh, there's also a big second-hand market. And so the challenge with that is, yes, our shoes are very durable, very timeless, classic styles, there's a big second-hand market, but we're not part of that transaction, right? So we're missing, we're missing a, a big part of Allen Edmonds' transactions by people who are buying shoes second-hand. So how can we tap that market? Who is our competition? To be honest, with the amount of uh, companies that are, you know, catering to our market, there's only a handful of, of competition. I would say it's not uh, immediately a huge issue, right? There's uh, Johnson & Murphy, there's Alden. But really, you know, we're all fighting for a uh, small pie. It's not, it's not your traditional competitive atmosphere. Uh, current challenges internally. Well, the reason you brought me uh, on board, uh, you're having some internal issues as I understand it. I've done some research myself. Uh, right now, our senior sales staff is about half of what it should be. Turnover is an issue, right? The industry standard is about 13.5%. Right now, right now, our turnover is, gosh, near 30 40%. Uh, I think the real issue, however, is the company culture, particularly within this department, which I'll be leading. Uh, the company culture, I just think it's not cohesive. Okay, I don't think our goals and our visions are properly oriented. So I have this graph over here. I don't know if you know John Wooden. He's a uh, very famous basketball coach. He developed this pyramid of success, right? And, you know, I actually blacked out the top so you can focus on the bottom, the building blocks of this pyramid, which are, keep in mind, friendship, loyalty, cooperation. Right? And at the very top is competitive greatness. And I think the big challenge that this department is suffering through is the fact that you know, there's been a, a, a recent power struggle. Right? And we've had two, two major people leave on their own accord. We've had two positions terminated. I mean, I don't, I don't want to get too, too much into those details, but I just think we don't have a very cohesive culture, very cohesive mindset within this department on this team. And so I, again, just want to highlight that competitive greatness and, and the power struggle that I've seen and people you know, wanting to go this way and that way and another way I think we need to focus more on friendship, loyalty, and cooperation within this team for us to really grow. And so that brings me to my sales management plan from January 2016 to June 2016. It's a six-month plan. Uh, initially, I want to meet with our remaining staff members, right? Um, I want to make sure that we're all on the same page. I want to make sure that we do have a love for our products, for our clients, uh, that we are committed to innovation and marketing, that are com committed to building this team. And I think that that comes at a price. So for our original, not original, but our remaining six senior staff members, uh, I anticipate a, a bonus program on top of our year-end bonus, which, which we have just had in December. I anticipate, you know, uh, working to get something like a 5% fixed bonus for the first six months, just to show our appreciation for you six people who have stayed with us and who are really going to build this team. Now, the recruitment process is going to be very inclusive, very collaborative. Okay, it's gonna, I'm going to, I'm going to lead it but I want the six of you to, to help me out with this process. Um, we need to have six positions to fill, so six junior executive positions, if that makes sense, junior executive. 
But we do need six new people on board for the size of our team and the size of our market. So what I'm thinking is two from uh, two internally, right? I, I highlight the marketing department because I think they could be a huge asset to us. But I definitely want two people internally. I think we're a big enough company that we have enough hidden and raw talent within us that we can definitely uh, uh, exploit. Uh, two within our own networks, right? I believe talent knows talent. And the 60 that remain here, uh, I've seen your work. I know that you're very talented. And I want to see who you know, who is in your network. Um, and then two are going to be external. I think we also need some young blood in here. So I'm looking for some college students or people fresh out of college, you know, uh, anywhere from three to 10 years of experience, relatively short uh, in, in this industry. So I'm looking for raw talent, expertise, and new talent. College degree is absolutely going to require for all candidates. Uh, but again, like I said, it's going to be a group effort, so I'm not necessarily going to take on the lead. More so, I want to collaborate with you and see who we like on our team, who do we feel is going to be, uh, bring added value to our group. And so these are the challenges that I want us to, to tackle. I want us to increase sales. I want to expand our marketing. I want to capture the second-hand market, which we're not tapping into, and we're not uh, having any part in that transaction. And I also want to reduce cost, because cost is a huge part of, of uh, manufacturing in the U.S. Uh, I'm sorry, that slide shouldn't be in there. Go on, am I going backwards? Oh, here's what I want to introduce. The Shoe Exchange Program. I think this is a huge program, a huge promotion that's really going to tackle all these issues for us, and it's really going to have us working together uh, on something big and something new. Shoe Exchange Program. And here's how it works. Customers can bring in their old Allen Edmonds shoes. They can bring it to our retail stores, to our warehouses. What they will receive is a trading credit, so much if you're purchasing a new vehicle. You get a trading credit for $75 to $150 towards a new pair of shoes. What we do with those old shoes is we, we, we receive those shoes and we donate them to charity. Now, this is what this aims to do. We want to show appreciation to our current and loyal fan base because we do have a lot of people who, you know, they take the shoes, they wear them for many years, they wear them to the ground. We want to show our appreciation to them. We want to expand our reach to the second-hand market, people who, um, who they own Allen and, Allen and shoes that they purchase uh, on eBay from, from other users, that sort of thing. We want them to, you know, be in our stores purchasing our new products. Uh, we want to take these old shoes and donate them to shoe repair shops around the third world. Uh, I say third world because I, I, I'm picturing, you know, uh, a shoe smith or, or you know, a, a crafter uh, in, in a country who, you know, doesn't typically have access to shoes like these. We want to help them, you know, work on their shoes, turn a profit on their shoes. We want to help them get, get our brand out there. <clears throat> we want to promote our company as being socially responsible by successfully recycling old items. Right? So our shoes are so timed and so well cared for and so well made that they can be sent around the world and, and they can be world worn for years and years to come, decades even. Uh, I also want this to qualify as for numerous charity tax credits and incentives. I'm looking to reduce costs in the program itself as well as reduce costs to our, um, to our production, which I'm hoping that these, these savings can possibly be funneled back into. Implementation is going to be the hardest aspect of this, I think. Uh, what I'm thinking is with our team of 12, I want to have three teams of four. And that's going to include two senior members, which are the original six that we've had, and two of our new junior members on the sales staff. And the key issues with this program are going to include how are we going to create this program? How are we going to educate our retailers and our vendors? How are we going to get them on board with this program? Uh, logistics regarding the cost to operate the program, right? Obviously, we're selling the shoes at a discount with the program by accepting old shoes and giving a tax, uh, not a tax credit, but a credit towards a new pair. So how are we going to fund this? Uh, are we going to uh, perhaps remove one or two sales that we normally have throughout the year, or are we going to perhaps make enough money uh, through donate, donating the tax incentives to offset the cost of the program? And finally, I wanted one team to find a qualified charity who's going to do what we want to do with, it, with the old shoes. We want someone to find uh, places that will appreciate the shoes, that will work on them, that will give them a chance at new life, and uh, bring more value to, to whoever they're sent. Here are my projections. New total shoe sales volumes with this program, I want to increase by anywhere from 10 to 20 percent in the third and fourth quarters of 2016 after we implement the program. I'm looking to take some of the savings from, from the charities that we work with and the tax incentives and the tax breaks. I want to take those savings and I want to funnel them back to production. I want to reduce the cost of production for each shoe by 5 percent. And the number of participants that I expect to have in this program on a monthly basis, especially on the third and fourth quarter of 2016, considering that the holiday shopping period, most people are going to be doing a lot of the shopping. I want to have about five to 1,000 participants in the program uh, a month for the second half of 2016. So that's what I want to do with the team. That's the direction that I want to take us. 
that's how I want to increase our sales and, and then develop a, a, a phenomenal sales team here at Allen. Uh, thank you very much. Any questions?